In the first months of the war, the Vigilante had earned a reputation as an exceptional recon plane. However, it had also established a less flattering reputation. Because of its sheer size and high landing speed, the Vigilante was notoriously difficult to bring aboard a carrier. Working in conjunction with American bombers became the primary role of Vigilante crews. Before an attack, Vigilante pilots would fly over a likely North Vietnamese target. After the bombing run, the Vigilante would again fly over the target to assess the damage. Because he enjoyed the element of surprise, the Vigilante pilot usually encountered little resistance before an attack. However, the post-strike flyover was a different matter. Some of the... Vigilantes were flown off the decks of carriers up until the ceasefire in 1973. Designed to fly against the best the Soviets had to offer, the Vigilante spent most of its career flying against a more ambiguous enemy in the skies over Southeast Asia. For American pilots, this was typical of Cold War reality. During the brush fires and wars of containment that characterized the Cold War, the aircraft carrier was the strong arm of American foreign policy. For almost 20 years, the Vigilante was the eye of the fleet. And during this tenure, the Vigilante community developed a distinguished reputation. When the Vigilante returned to the ship, Intelligence information recorded on tape and film are rushed to a highly specialized group of rooms several floors below the flight deck. This area, known as the Integrated Operational Intelligence Center, is where all of the processing and interpretation takes place. With the end of the Cold War, there are now signs that dedicated tactical reconnaissance may be re-emerging as a defense priority. In the tradition of the Vigilante, an unmanned reconnaissance system currently under development promises to give battlefield commanders an eye in the sky.